the ARK of the Covenant. The purpose of building the temple was to house the Ark of the Covenant, so the discovery of the most sacred item in Jewish history may be all that is needed to initiate the rebuilding of the temple. However, Jeremiah 27:22 seems to indicate a connection between the temple treasures, and the existence of the temple. According to Ezra, after the first temple was destroyed, the temple vessels had to be returned or refabricated before the temple could be rebuilt. Thus, only the existence of the temple vessels may be all that is needed to rebuild the temple, since it is believed that the Ark was not in the second temple. The Ark was a rectangular box four feet long, and two feet high, made of acacia wood, distinguished as a type of wood that does not decay, and covered with gold, with two cherubs, a rank of angels, looking down and facing each other on its lid with outstretched wings, which was known as the mercy seat. It was constructed at Mount Sinai by Bezalel, according to the instructions Moses received from God. Inside was placed the rod of Aaron, a pot of manna, which had been sent by God to feed the Israelites during their time of wandering in the wilderness, and the two tablets of the law given to Moses, known as the Ten Commandments. Some sources also claim that it contains the original books of Moses. It represented the divine presence of God, and was the point where the literal manifestation of God on this earth took place. Just looking at it was known to cause death. The Bible tells us of the power it possessed. It caused the Jordan River to part, Joshua 3 8 to 4 11, aided in the destruction of Jericho, Joshua 6 4 to 21, and brought about numerous military victories when it was present. Needless to say, it developed quite a mystique. Inside the temple, the ark was placed in a dark, windowless room known as the Holy of Holies. A veil was placed around the ark, and only once a year, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest was allowed to enter. Even then, he was to carry a container of burning incense, which filled the room with smoke, thus obscuring his view of the ark. He would sprinkle the blood of a bullock on the ground in front of the ark, and on the mercy seat, as atonement for the sins of the priests, and then the blood of a goat, as a symbolic atonement for the sins of the people. A rope would be tied around his waist, so if for some reason he accidentally touched the ark and was killed, he could be pulled out without risk by the other priests. In the Bible, there are 200 references to the Ark of the Covenant up to the time of Jeremiah, but nothing afterward. It has since disappeared, and nobody is really sure where it's at. The common belief is that the temple will not be rebuilt unless the Ark is found. The Ark had not been removed from the temple during or after the reign of King Josiah, which had begun in 640 BC, and it was in place in the Holy of Holies in 701 BC, which leaves 61 years in which it could have disappeared. It is unlikely that Hezekiah, 716 to 687 BC, would have allowed the Ark to be taken away. Between the time of his death, and Josiah's reign, there were two other rulers. Manasseh, 687 to 642 BC, and Ammon, 642 to 640 BC. Ammon discovered that Manasseh had been involved in a form of Baal worship, and had erected an image of Astarte, Asherah, in the temple, 2 Kings 21 4 to 7, 2 Chronicles 33 7 and it is believed that he would have ordered the Levites to remove the Ark. The Ark reappeared in 622 BC, 2 Kings 22 1-7, 2 Chronicles 34 8-33, 2 Chronicles 35-3, during the reign of Manasseh's grandson, King Josiah, who vanquished idolatry, repaired and purified the temple. However, idolatry took root again, and the actions of Rehoboam, Solomon's son, caused the kingdom to be divided, with Judah, Judea, in the south, and Israel to the north. Judgment came upon the northern kingdom in 721 BC when the Assyrians attacked them, and the southern kingdom paid the price for the idolatry when the armies of Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, swept through the land in 606 BC, and then again in 597 BC. During the second invasion, 2 Kings 24:13 says that all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasure of the king's house were taken, and all the vessels of gold which Solomon king of Israel had made in the temple of the Lord had been cut in pieces. The original temple was destroyed in 586 BC by the Babylonian commander, Nebuzaradan, 2 Kings 25 8-9. And the rest of the treasures were plundered and taken to a Babylonian temple at Shinar, Daniel 1-2, which has led some to theorize that what was taken previously came from the temple treasury, since Nebuchadnezzar's initial action against Judah was in response to them not paying tribute to him. Through all of this, the Ark was not mentioned. Lists of temple items, 2 Kings 25 13-17, Jeremiah 52 17-23, do not refer to any temple treasures from the Holy of Holies, and it is this silence that could indicate that it wasn't captured, since there is a biblical record of the time when the Philistines captured the Ark. In addition, 
Ezra 17-11 states that all the captured items were later returned by the Persians, but the Ark was not discussed. So, either the Ark was destroyed along with the Temple, possibly indicated by the destruction of the goodly vessels in 2 Chronicles 36-19, or the Ark was hidden before it could be found. When Rome invaded Judea in 63 BC, and the Roman general Pompey swept through Jerusalem, entering the Temple, and the Holy of Holies, it was empty. Jewish history records the high priest making his offering upon the foundation stone of the Holy of Holies, and not the Ark. After Titus returned to Rome with some of the temple treasure, the Arch of Triumph, or Arch of Titus, was built in 81 AD at the entrance to the Forum, in the Palatine section of Rome, to commemorate his victory. It depicted the seven-branched candelabra known as the menorah, with an octagonal base, rather than a three-legged stand, which it actually has, which could indicate that it was a duplicate kept in the treasury, the golden table of the showbread, and the seven trumpets of the jubilee. The Ark is not pictured, thus adding to the evidence that the Ark was not in the second temple, and has been hidden. According to the Mishnah, Sota 9a, after the temple was built, the tabernacle was stored under the crypts of the temple. It is believed that King Solomon constructed a secret chamber in the recesses of the Temple Mount to hide the Ark, which is where it was placed during the reign of Manasseh. Jewish tradition has held that the Ark and the Altar of Incense were hidden in a secret location under a woodshed on the western side of the Temple, near the Holy of Holies. This is not such a far-fetched idea when you realize that under the city of Jerusalem there is an underground city consisting of a number of tunnels, chambers, and cisterns, which were created to establish a water storage system, as quarters for guards chambers to hold sacrificial animals, rooms containing ritual bathing areas, prison cells, and storage areas for temple treasures. The best known of these subterranean areas is Hezekiah's Tunnel, which was constructed to make sure Jerusalem would have fresh water in case the city was attacked. It started at Cajon Spring, and ran for a third of a mile, through solid rock, spilling into the Pool of Siloam. An escape tunnel used by King Zedekiah which ran from the Tower of Antonia, to a point near the Eastern Gate, emerging outside the walls of the city, covering a distance of over 8,000 feet. The nine original members of the Knights Templar were received by King Baldwin I, Baudouin, in Jerusalem in 1119, and they established their headquarters in a wing of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which had been converted to a palace. They were given complete access to the palace and various outbuildings which were on the site where Solomon's temple originally stood, which was adjacent to the Dome of the Rock. Although their goal was to keep the road from the coast to Jerusalem free from bandits, for nine years they rarely left the palace grounds. It was an unrealistic pledge, because it would have been difficult for the Nine to patrol this 50-mile road. Besides, a military order known as the Knights of St. John were already performing that task before the Templars showed up. It is now known that they had some knowledge about the Temple treasures, because there is evidence which indicates that they were engaged in a massive excavation project. Vast arched subterranean rooms were used by knights during the Crusades to keep horses, and were known as Solomon's stables. The Templars were aware of these hidden areas underneath the temple grounds, and believed that the Ark would be found there. They mounted an operation to plunder whatever treasurers they could find. Although it is questionable that they found the Ark. It is believed that they discovered treasure, relics and ancient manuscripts dating back to the time of Moses. Israeli archaeologists, engaged in excavations on the southern side of the mount, found the exit point of a tunnel which had been dug by the Templars. It lead inward about 30 yards, where it was blocked by stone and debris. There has been many stories concerning the location of the Ark of the Covenant. Some believe it is still buried in a secret chamber on the Temple Mount. Jewish historian Eupolemus wrote that many of the Temple treasures had been plundered by Babylon, except for the Ark and the tablets in it. This Jeremiah preserved. According to the apocryphal second book of Maccabees 2 4-8, which has been dated to 163 BC, the prophet Jeremiah had concealed the ark, as well as the tabernacle, and the altar of incense, in a cave on the mountain where Moses went up and beheld the heritage of God. Some researchers believe that this could refer to either Mount Sinai or Mount Nebo, which is located in what is now the country of Jordan, and is the traditional burial place of Moses. The contention was made, that since these articles were made under the leadership of Moses, they may have been deposited at the site of his burial. Various archaeological expeditions had failed to turn up anything there. During the 1920s, American explorer, Antonio Frederick Futterer, searched various locations in Jordan for the Ark, based on the clues in two Maccabees, and believed the location to be on Mount Pisgah, the highest peak on the Mount Nebo range. He claimed to have found an inscription on the sealed entrance of a tunnel which said, Herein lies the Golden Ark of the Covenant. In 1981, while following Futterer's map of Mount Pisgah, a gully was discovered by Tom Croser, an American explorer, 
which led to a 4x7 tunnel that plunged 600 feet into the ground, ending at a wall, which when broken down, revealed a 10x12 crypt which held a rectangular chest 62 long, 37 high and 37 wide, wrapped in a blue cloth, which he believed to be the Ark. Beside it was another bundle, which he thought contained the carrying poles, the cherubim which had been mounted on the top, and the legs. The cave is located near the Church of the Franciscan Fathers of Terra Santa, and is under a building which contains the remains of an old Byzantine church. He didn't disturb the find, thus he doesn't know for sure what he saw. He reported it to the media, and he claimed that God told him to send the photographs he took to London banker David Rothschild, who some people have claimed is a direct descendant of Jesus, and has been chosen to build the third temple. Rothschild refused to accept the pictures, and they were returned to Crozer. Noted archaeologist Siegfried Horn visited his home in Winfield, Kansas to see the pictures. Only two had any images at all one is fuzzy, but does show a chamber with a yellow box in the center. His opinion was that it was not an ancient artifact but of modern fabrication. In January, 1979, archaeologist Ronald Wyatt, while sightseeing near the Damascus Gate, felt that the location of Jeremiah's Grotto was near an ancient stone quarry on the northern extension of Mount Moriah, that is sometimes referred to as the Calvary Escarpment, because it contains the skull face configuration that has been connected to the Golgotha. He believed that during the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem from 587 to 586 BC, when the city was surrounded, it would have been impossible to remove the Ark, so it had to be there. With the permission of the landowner, and a permit from Israeli officials, he excavated the area. On January 6, 1982, he entered a chamber that contained the Ark, and other artifacts from the first temple, which had been hidden there by Jeremiah. The 22-foot-long cave is actually located directly beneath the area where Christ was crucified. According to Wyatt's research, when Jesus was crucified, his blood M's family tomb in Hebron. Plus, his work has produced the most information on the Ark, all of which seems to be compatible with scripture. Dr. Gary Collett believes that Maccabees actually refers to Qumran, and says that the layout of Cave 4 is similar to the temple, and that its lower level may have been the containment room used by Jeremiah to temporarily protect the Ark. In 1992, two scientists from the Department of Geophysics and Planetary Science at Tel Aviv University used a groundbreaking radar known as a molecular frequency analyzer and a seismic reflection device near two caves at the Wadi La Chippa, the dome of the bridge, which indicated the presence of a room containing the same sort of pottery known to contain scrolls. Preliminary trenches dug in 1993 failed to turn up anything substantial. Once Christianity became the official religion of Rome, the treasures plundered by its legions fell into the possession of the Catholic Church. Nelson Canode, of Amarillo, Texas, a former Benedictine monk at a monastery at Subiaco, Italy, about 30 miles from Rome, said that he was taken to a cave, four levels below the monastery, where ancient artifacts were being shuttled from there to the underground vaults of the Vatican, and included the Ark and the disassembled tabernacle. There are many who believe that once Jerusalem becomes an international city, the Vatican will return any temple items in their possession. Because of the research done by Graham Hancock for his book The Sign and the Seal, some people think the Ark may be in Ethiopia. Menelik I, the royal son of King Solomon, returned to Ethiopia, after his mother, the Queen of Sheba, died. When he was 20 years old, he returned to Israel, and Solomon treated him with so much favor, that the elders were jealous and wanted him to return home. Solomon agreed to send him home, on the condition that the firstborn sons of all the elders would go with him. Solomon wanted to give him a replica of the Ark to take with him. However, Azarias, the son of Zadok, the high priest, worried about the idol worship which was flourishing, switched the arks, and took the real one. The ark was taken to Egypt, on the island of Elephantine in the middle of the Nile, near Aswan, where a temple was built to protect it. It remained there for 200 years, until the temple was destroyed. The ark was carried along the Nile, and the Takaz tributary into Ethiopia. They arrived at Lake Tana, which was considered a holy place. The Ark stayed on the island of Tana Kirkos for 800 years, where it was taken to the Church of St. Mary of Zion, which had been built in 372 to hold the Ark. During the 1530s, when the Muslims attacked, it was moved to safety, but returned a hundred years later to a rebuilt St. Mary's, which had been constructed on the ruins of the first. It remained there until 1965, when Emperor Haile Selassie, who called himself the conquering Lion of Judah and claimed to be a direct descendant of King Solomon, moved it to the Church of Zion near the center of Aksum, Aksum, in northern Ethiopia. Though the communists overthrew the monarchy in 1974, killed Selassie, 
and imprisoned much of the royal family. The Ark remained safe because of its reputation for possessing an awesome amount of power, which has generated enough superstition to prevent people from trying to get to it. During all these years, the Ark has been guarded by Menelik's descendants, and the descendants of those who accompanied him, who became known as Falasha, Exile, Jews, or the Black Jews this area became part of the independent nation of Eritrea in 1993. It was alleged, that when Israel became a nation, an appeal was made to Emperor Selassie to return the Ark. He said, in principle, I agree that the Ark should be returned to the temple, but the correct time has not yet come. Many researchers believe that the Ark is at the chapel at Oxum, although it has never been seen. Is Israel waiting for the discovery of the Ark, so they can rebuild the temple, or are they waiting for the time when they can freely rebuild their temple, so they can retrieve the Ark and place it in the Holy of Holies? There are some who share the suspicion, that Israel already knows where the Ark is, but also know that the political climate of their homeland is too volatile to take a chance on revealing its location until the right time. Unlike the Temple, the Ark is not mentioned in Biblical prophecy. As we have discovered, the Ark was not in the Second Temple, so the existence of the Ark is not necessary for the Temple to be rebuilt. However, if you turn on the 6 o'clock news, and you see that Israel is announcing the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant, this certainly will have a bearing on the prophetic timetable.